but yes. it's, it's, it's very powerful. Look, I'm not religious, but I believe in people, I believe in humanity, I believe in human behavior. What, um, what can we do to, you know, do educate what you better? Do. That's what you do. That's what you are doing. Educate. Why do you think I do? I'm an old bag. I'm a, excuse me, I'm an old grandma, great grandma. And I do it and I'm tired. But it's my obligation. And I'll tell the children in school, I'll tell them. There will be people running around saying it never happened. They will be, they are, and they will be. And you tell them. It happened. I saw people who survived. I saw people who were there, who were witnesses. It happened. And continue. Just continue. Because we are gone. Our generation is dying out. It's time. But whatever time we have, we have to tell you. And you will continue. You will propagate the idea. We are trying to remember the worst of humanity in the past to inspire us to, you know, and to me, seeing a Jewish person standing next to a Muslim person, acknowledging both the Holocaust and other things. Well, it's fine. Whatever you're feeling, it's amazing to share. It's, it's, it's well, important. Well, I was telling Sharon, I said, look at this. There's a cat said, and there's a Muslim boy, and there's a Christian boy, and they're still together, and they are doing the same thing. So why can't we all do the same thing, damn it? Excuse me. And as we read, initially, the, the feeling was, I'm so scared I'm going to miss a name, or I'm so scared I'm going to get this wrong. But then as we got into it, and then we had a rhythm, me and my partner, you started to really think about each person as you're reading your name, and the names that had names like friends of mine. You know, I, mean, I have to say, David, this is one of the things that I think is really the most important policy decision that your student group has made, and I, I didn't know this was something that, that you drove, is the idea that um, when we talk about genocide, um, we don't want to confine our our grieving, our reckoning to the, the, the genocide in the Second World War and the Holocaust. You know, the, the, the divisions that are possible in our 21st century world come around honoring some people more and some people less. And the, the decision you took to, to take seriously everybody who has been killed in a genocide um, and honor everybody together is just, it's, it's very fundamental. It ends up being a way to, to preempt conflict and division as opposed to foster it. And that's very important to me. I, I wouldn't be reading those names if I didn't know that you counted everybody's names, not just your grandfather and not Housen, and not just my friends. This is actually really good, so we can... <laughs> This is what we're having meetings. Like, yeah, like, this is, Sarah, like, like, there are people style, that are going to be right? really jealous that this is happening right now. In your home, drinking wine, having tea. Yeah. I get ad made for like however long. Yeah. Is, um, this is kind of priceless and awesome. So what I what I um, would like to do, remember, I, I thought about this after you asked me to read those six names, just those six names. Would you be willing to have me add to those names, right? So that you, your... CPM guys, that's what the six. But like this book is all about expanding our ideas mm -hmm. about what counts as genocide. And so they have all these chapters. And I just felt like I would like there to be some element in your film where something that's not already on your list gets on your list, right? So yeah. that like you perform the openness to what counts as a genocide in there. Mm -hmm. So I could just read all these, these ones that are in this chapter and we could talk about, well, this is another way to think about and I think I remember this is what we talked about, right, was that if you're trying to figure out how do you go about differentiating a war crime or a crime against humanity from genocide, right, and you, you're going to be looking to historians who are doing that kind of deep factual work. And these guys are saying that given their empirical research, this is what they think is a genocide, right? So when we start to think about, like, which genocides should be named as genocides, one of the the thoughts I had after we talked earlier was, you know, how would you go about figuring out what the rule of decision is for genocides, right? So here's an example of a, you know, series of critical essays that are put together by historians for which genocides really we ought to reckon with as genocides. So I'm going to read some names. Bangladesh, East Timor, Guatemala, 
Burundi, Indonesia, Ukraine, the Kurds, indigenous peoples, and the former Yugoslavia. That these are the kinds of circumstances that have risen to the level that historians say, listen, you know, we need to understand what happened here. Soviet man-made famine in Ukraine. It's not on the list that people think of, but here's historians arguing for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, questions? What ends up being really important in any crime is you have to have these two elements of the act, what people actually have done, and then the very tricky part, what did they intend? So you notice the language in here talks about not only what are you doing, but what did you intend to do when you did that? So that's why it gets technically difficult. That's how we don't know the difference between genocide and ethnic cleansing. Many people say it's the difference of intent. What's the difference between ethnic cleansing in Yugoslavia and genocide in Rwanda? One of the differences is that the intent is established better in one versus the other. Well, you know, I've been reading names for many, many years. Um, through the more traditional Young know, Shoa efforts, but now very proudly with, uh, with CPM. Um, I'm a child of Holocaust survivors, so it has particularly significant meaning for me since um, I always begin by um, at least thinking about and often reading out loud my own family names that um, we've kept track of who were killed, which is a, more of my family did not survive the Holocaust than did survive. So. Uh, it's particularly poignant for me, and uh, I'm actually quite proud that this has expanded to include other genocides because uh, I think the collective connectivity of all just um, sends a message that is important. Certainly, I felt very proud of uh, uh, several generations of students who have come to understand the importance of acknowledging commemorating and predominantly giving visibility to the six genocides that really are um, symbols of the worst in, in humanity in order to bring out and preserve the best of humanity. Any, you know, at any given time, um, a, a, an accident of history, it could have been us, it could have been me, it could have been you, it could have been anybody walking around here. Um, so it's. It, it is a it, it is a power, powerful reminder. It's sort of amazing what reading a name could do. You know, a picture is what it said. A picture is worth a thousand words. In this case, um, two words is worth a thousand pictures. It's not the first time I've done it. In fact, I think I've been able to do this every year that um, it has taken place on campus. And I remember the first time I read the names, I was a little worried and frightened and sort of scared and just didn't know what to expect. And um, never did I imagine that it would sort of evoke just some really deep emotions. Um, I think I was thinking a lot about how big the book was, and I was thinking about how many other books there were. Um, and so I think when we, when we talk about these um, events in our history and you know, we talk about the people. It's hard to really get a grasp for how many people it really did impact. Um, and so, what I was thinking of when I was reading was just how many people these events really did affect. Um, and then those these people are, um, you know, they're not here as much anymore, and they won't be in the future. Um, and so, I think it's really important that we continue stuff like this because we need to keep it in people's minds that this has happened in the past, and we have to prevent it from happening again in the future. And it's a lot harder to do when the actual people who experienced it aren't here, but uh, that's what we're here for, so that we can pass on that, that um, what we felt when we met those people on the others. Yeah. Any other final thoughts that you wanted to share? I, mean, I think it's just a great reminder of how brutal humans can be um, at their worst. And this is just a reminder of how beautiful humans can be at their best. It's just reflective of a time when, yeah, things are not so, not good at all. Um, and just a reminder of how we can improve upon that and not let it happen again.